Welcome to Matt Bayeski Crystal's channel. Hi guys, good morning. <laughs> I hope you're okay. <sighs> oh my God, Matt Bayeski channel, it's gone or it's not working or uh, I don't know, he's not on it, what's going on? Yeah, I've been banned, so I've uh, learned my lesson guys, but good morning, we're here. This is another channel, enjoy it for, uh, for a while till we jump back onto the other one and we create a beautiful other channel very soon, hopefully. Okay, we're talking, we've just received an email um, and we're answering it now. Crystals and animals. Hey, eh? not bad really, is it? It's quite a nice little topic. Uh, I talk about this in the 4-Day Pure Energy Healing Academy course, which is coming out uh, in a few days. We're uh, all joining each other in a few days uh, on the 5th to the 8th of August, so that should be great. So I'll give you a just a short version because I don't want to bore you today. <laughs> It'll take too long. But I will give you uh, some tips as a, an animal healer as I was. I worked on many different animals. Um, dolphins, believe it or not, yeah. Uh, thoroughbred horses, Egyptian. Um, just many different unusual animals too. Um, doggies was a normal one, cats another one. Um, I've done uh, chinchillas. Um, uh, guinea pigs, uh, lots of little different animals and uh, we're actually going to talk about, uh, I think the question was, um, is there any crystals you should and shouldn't use with animals, which is a great question really. So if I was sat with you now and I was doing a workshop and somebody put their hand up and said, Mark, is there any crystals that you shouldn't use for animals? I don't see it as as a, a crystal not being used for an animal, but what I would say is an animal is different than a human. An animal is a soul like you have a soul. We're all souls. Animals are spirit. We're spirit, okay? Just because they've got four legs, it doesn't mean they're indifferent from us. But actually, in a in a spiritual sense, there is a difference. And in a, a heightened awareness of our senses, they are far more attuned. Why is that? Well, the dog can tell another dog what's wrong with them. How do I know that? Because I've seen many dogs go into another dog and smelling a uh, disease or issue uh, in a certain place. Whether that is the smell, whether it's frequency, whether it's just a knowing. A dog knows when you are not well. A dog will go to a certain part of your body and sit by your body because it knows. A dog, uh, an animal is a healer in, in truth. And the reason why they're a healer is because their sensitivity is about a thousand times higher than ours. What I'm trying to say is that they are attuned to psychic and healing and uh, awareness beyond our scope. They see and feel more than we could ever imagine. Their, their, their communication in a psychic sense is phenomenal. So their intuition is phenomenal. I could read stories to you about uh, animals that I've seen and witnessed doing things that would blow you away. But just take that one side and, and just, just put it to one side and just let's stay with that, okay? If something is a very high frequency, as a, as a beautiful, say, doggy, why would you want to bring a piece of Moldavite and stick it on its third eye? Why would you want to do that? Well, you wouldn't because it doesn't need it. So I think it's more about what an animal needs in that sense. My understanding over these 20 years of animals is the times animals come to me, the doggies and the cats and all whatever I'm working on, um, there's a need for something in a sense of a lack of something. So a lack of love because they've been abused, um, a lack of certain nu nutritions, minerals, which nobody ever really thinks about. Uh, they just feed them dog food, which is mass produced. And I believe is one of the biggest reasons why cancer is in animals at this moment. Um, that's my take. You can say what you want. Oh, they spend millions on these these uh, biscuits. They spend millions on, on the science of him. Yeah, whatever, mate. Uh, so that's my take on that. So animals do end up ill. My two schnauzers had cancer. Did we feed them healthy when they were babies? We did. We minced everything with vegetables. Did we continue doing that? No, we didn't. 
we fed them. Uh, obviously, we look. We, we we used to do. Uh, uh, given our leftovers of uh, vegetables and things like that, and uh, whenever they were poorly, we'd we'd do do it that way. But predominantly, laziness as we are, and we don't treat them like children as we should. In that respect, we should be cooking their meals for them and and doing what we do for our own children. But oh no no brainwashing of of, of mainstream media. Sorry about the noise brainwashing of mainstream media of, of of vets buy this this is the best brand look at this silver packet on this big and it's only 50 euros jesus christ 50 euros yes but they spend millions on the and then this is perfect it's got the minerals it's got yeah yeah that's why they're all getting cancer and dying whatever but we're being duped and we believed it and i realize more than ever now when my two moved into the light that it's so important that we feed our uh, doggies with healthy nutrition, natural and healthy foods. We need to give them plants, we need to give them herbs, these things that they would naturally eat if they were out in the wild. Um, uh, back in the centuries when they were out in the wild, they used to eat certain plants, certain foods, knowing when to, why do you think a cat eats grass? Wants to get rid of something out of its stomach which shouldn't be there. Nine times out of 10, it's what we fed them them bloody um, biscuits and that that rubbish. But anyway, that's by the by. So, animals, I go off one daughter. Animals, and uh, in my opinion, there's abuse of the past and we need to try and heal them from that or physical issues, okay? So on them two points, we should be looking at crystals that are healing crystals. So it makes sense to forget about all the crystals that elevate and make you more heightened awareness. So that gets rid of a lot of crystals, right, that you know of. And now we're looking at crystals that um, we need to look at our, our animals and see, okay, what's wrong with them? So take, for instance, you get a, 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 an animal that is super heightenedly um, energetic and it just doesn't stop. You want to bring balance to that energy within your little doggy or cat. You know, if a cat or dog is aggressive and angry, we need to look at a crystal that will calm them down. So you've got that side of things, which is the emotional side. Um, some animals get depressed, um, which is really sad to see, and they, they have no energy. Now we need to figure out what crystal helps with, um, I, you see, as a healer, we, we attune to them. So what I normally do, or what I did in a healing session when, an, when a little doggy came, just take for instance, a little dog would come, I would tell my client not to say anything. And what I would do is I would just feel the doggy. So I would go down on, on the floor, never ever above the dog, always go down on the level of the dog. Don't fuss, don't you know, anyway, this is, I'm going into pure energy healing as a healer, forget it. So, um, I would attune to what's going on. I, I would ask what's going on and the doggy would give me that information or the energy around it or the feeling I would get is, okay, this is, I think what's wrong with the doggy. And I would attune to a certain crystal. So take for instance, there was a doggy that was feeling heartbreak because um, it was used to being with its mother or father and then the mother or father or brother or, or the other doggy that it lived with died and now it's, it's dealing with grief. So I'd be looking at a crystal for grief which would be black tourmaline or many others but then I would hold that crystal in my hand and I would uh, gently with my other hand just stroke the doggy and give it healing. By stroking is a healing, it's the same thing, whether you put your hand on a doggy, which they don't normally like, don't, don't put it on its head, There's not, it's not necessary, but if you can stroke the dog on its head, then the doggy, you can give it healing. So always stroke the, the doggy or, or the animal. If it's a cat and it's vicious, then it needs to be in a basket and then you need to work on that energy holding the crystal. Putting the crystal in the bed of a cat or a dog is a wonderful thing okay so if a, let's say a dog is just in a, a difficult state of sleep and it struggles and it's and it's always having nightmares and struggles with that you need to find a crystal that's good for nightmares 
and there's things that are going on in the mind, the worry and the stress and all the excitement. So again, you're looking for balance with a crystal for that. So you'd be choosing a certain crystal that will balance the energy and you would put that around somewhere close. Now, is it a good idea to put crystals on doggies? There's no reason if it isn't a, a, a super powerful crystal that, that's more for attunement and high vibration. So I'm looking at something to balance the energy. So I'm looking for a crystal, let's say a, a rose quartz, to balance uh, the doggy on, on a sleep night. So I, th there are certain collars that you can have crystals on. There's nothing wrong with that, but I, I wouldn't kind of recommend say amethyst because amethyst is it's a very high highly attuned crystal to help you see and feel more and and, and have uh, greater experiences with with the, that world well that's okay for us but for doggies they're already attuned to that energy that frequency that's why they can see uh, spirit that's why they bark at walls and they they like like this because they're already attuned to it so they don't need more attunement do you understand what i'm trying to say what i'm trying to tell you is it's better if you go for the more gentle crystal. And for, for a gentle crystal, for you think, ah, it's not that powerful. To them, it's a, it's a thousand times more powerful than what you could feel. So that also is very relevant to two things. One, if you want to um, heal an animal um, and you don't want it too much, then move the crystal further away. If you put the crystal very close, then for me, my own personal feeling is, uh, uh, when I first started this work, there were socks that were used that you put a crystal inside. The only time I recommend a crystal around a neck is when uh, an animal is in real pain uh, in a physical way. So they're trying to clear that physical issue and that's when I would use that. I, I used to actually get um, right really children's socks and cut. Um, one part and then push the sock up and put a little sliver of a crystal in but nine times out of ten the doggy doesn't even like that and rips it off but if you have the time when you stroke your little doggy if you've got the crystal in your hand and you stroke the doggy you'll find that the energy from that crystal will come through your arm and through your shoulders and down your other arm and straight into the doggy so you're receiving that energy of crystal work or you can uh, uh, take the crystal and just gently massage, but you do it gently because if it, it's a hard crystal, so you, you know, you've got to be careful. But once you've put that crystal on gently and you do that, then that's fine. The crystal energy will start to balance and clear and strengthen those mm. places. So there are crystals that I really enjoyed using on animals and, and rose quartz was one of them always a beautiful and an amazing delicate crystal there's so many crystals i can talk about that you can use agates seem to be a beautiful crystal as well that they're really attuned to so i like agates underneath their bed i put you know like like a pink agate for instance a nice pink agate underneath there nice cleansing nice healing nice strengthening uh, clearing the blood clearing their energy so i'd be looking at crystals that are uh, great for physical and great for emotional so that kind of makes sense i hope it makes sense to you anyway um so there are numerous ways of doing this uh, morning afternoon night depending on how you feel and how how energetic you are that's one thing you can do so if you know it just give yourself uh, 10 or 15 minutes maximum you don't need to do it for an hour because Animals absorb energy so fast, it's unreal. So a, a five minute healing session on a doggy is, in, is equal to an hour or two hours on us, okay? So that's another thing you should always bear in mind. Is, is there too much healing? Is there, do, should you not do too much healing? Is there a certain, no, no. If it's pure healing, it's fine. The doggy will fall asleep or say, okay, I've had enough. And the doggy just goes. As a healer is going into people's homes, the dog already is a, either fallen asleep, which is very normal, or they've said, that's great, I've had enough, see you later, I'm off. Just like a little child, really. A little child will go, okay, check it, okay, it's gone, I've, I've had it now, and then they're off. So this is a snippet, a snippet of the Pure Energy Healing 4-Day course, what we talk about and uh, what we learn and uh, through the 20 years that I've experienced healing on uh, 
hundreds of thousands of people and animals as well. So I hope you enjoyed this little snippet of information. One thing I would say is practice and try different crystals. And um, honestly, guys, it's, it, it, if you go to my website, you can go to any website, but if you go to my website, there's a search bar when you go onto the shop and just type in um, animal animal healing or if your animal, if your doggy has an illness, just type that illness in and all the crystals will come up. They'll tell you which ones and then you scan and have a look and go, oh, that, that's the one. I don't know why, but that's it. Then that's what I would choose. Putting the crystal in a room is equal to putting it next to its bed because it still picks up on that energy. So you'll normally find that if you're a healer, and most healers will know this, as soon as you start healing work, the animals come in and want to be around you. So it makes sense if you can train yourself to be a healer and you can learn how to uh, bring that beautiful energy of healing, which is universal and it's all around us. And a lot of us do it without even knowing. If you can bring that energy in and focus it on onto the animal as you um, stroke it, or if you just sit and meditate in that room where the animal is, uh, the doggy or the cat will either fall asleep next to you, as we know as healers, that's what happens. All the animals come straight underneath the healing bed because they're feeling that energy and they're picking it up. So also when you're holding a crystal, you're putting good energy into it. When you're closing your eyes, you're meditating. Take that crystal, right? Even if it's for 10 minutes or five minutes after you've done that beautiful healing work and it's in that crystal and you've put love in there and you see your, a trick is just seeing your beautiful pet well and happy and running around. Seeing that and focusing on that as part of the meditation. Once you've finished, you put the crystal in the bed of your, your doggy or close by and they will pick up that energy and they will self heal. The crystal doesn't heal them. They just receive energy from that crystal and then their body's energy will start to repair. Not always, but a lot of the times, it really does make a massive difference. I hope this little short video serves you well. I hope if you enjoyed it and you think, you know what, I'd like to learn more. I'd like, this is amazing. This is like, like a tiny sliver of the four day pure energy healing course this coming 5th to the 8th of August and I hope you can all join. Link below and I'll see you there on the interactive nights when you've finished your day. Four days guys, you've got to book out four days of your life and get clients ready and get some animals ready. Become the most amazing healer that you already are. See you on the, I think it's the 5th to the 8th of August, so not long. So I'll, I'll leave the link below and um, I'll speak to you tomorrow guys. Looking forward to it. Take care.